Hello, welcome back Greenford Coders, welcome to the Joy of Code, this is Michael. And today we will not um, program some new functionality for our game, but instead we will look back and reflect a bit and see um, what it is that we have seen so far and analyze a bit. It is important if you want to learn to program properly to not only be able to press ahead and and um, get things done but also to gain a full understanding of what it is that you're actually doing um, so along the way every now and then we have to um, step back a bit and and see what it is that we've actually been doing so that's what we'll do today it won't be very long i'll just spend a few minutes um talk looking a bit at the code that we have stared at for a few times already now and um, today i will talk about the structure of a class. So let's have a look. Here we have the turtle scenario that you know very well by now and let's just open up a class um, and when we've done this bef previously uh, we have concentrated on the act method and that is where we have uh, written all our code. In this uh, case I have opened up the lattice class and the lattice of course is completely passive it doesn't do anything so the act method is empty. Um, today we will just um, briefly look at all the rest of the text that is on the screen here. Um, that is the complete class definition um, that we see here. So we can do that first of all in a sort of somewhat abstract way if we look at this. This is generically what a class definition looks like. So at first we have what's called an import statement. This makes classes from elsewhere available to our own class. So here we are importing from Greenfoot and this star here, the asterisk, means um, that we import everything from what's called the Greenfoot package. Um, so this makes all the the actor and world and Greenfoot classes um, available to us to use. For now we don't need to pay very much attention to this. We will always have to import uh, the Greenfoot package in Greenfoot scenarios. So that line for us as long as we're in Greenfoot will always be there and sometime a bit later we will see other import statements but I'll talk more about that when we get to that point. For now um, this will always be just this one import statement uh, and um, that will not change for a little while. We have here, which I've shown in blue, a comment and I'll talk about comments in a, in a minute a little bit more. So after the import statement usually follows a comment that describes what this class is and what it does. And then comes the structure of the class itself. And I've shown here in this orangey color those things um, that vary so they are placeholders and what is shown in black um, actually appears literally in this way in the class. So there's the word public that means we have a public class means we have a class that can be accessed from other classes. Um, our classes will always be public so that is fixed then there's the word class that is fixed then we have a name for the class and extend superclass is a definition that says what the superclass of our class is. Um, then is a pair of curly brackets and in between those curly brackets are the methods. We can look at that in our example. This is what it looks like in the lattice class. Here's the import statement. There's a comment and I've been lazy. I There's just a default comment here which is not very good and I should really fill that in. Um, then there is what's called the header of the class, the words public class and lattice. And you see that the Greenfoot editor colors some of the words to emphasize the keywords of the language like class and extends. Those are what's called reserved words which you can't change. Um, here is the name of the class. In our um, case it is lettuce and there is the name of the superclass. So we can see that lettuce is a subclass of actor and we can also see that in the diagram over here we see lettuce points to actor which means lettuce says its superclass is actor. So a lettuce is an actor. The classes in Greenfoot will always be, well, almost always, for a while will always be a subclass of either actor, directly or indirectly, or there will be a subclass of world. A bit later we will also see classes that are not subclasses of actor or world, but we'll get to that later. Then here's a pair of curly brackets, this one and this one, and in between are 
the methods. These methods, in this case there's only one, there's only the act method. In other cases, if you for example look here at the turtle class, um, then we see that there are more methods. Here for example, see there is no class comment here, which uh, shows us, because this worked, that the class comment actually is not compulsory but it is considered bad style not to have one. So this is actually another thing that I should fix. I'll just put a note here for myself. Um, so that I do that later. There should really be a class command there, but the compiler does not insist on it. All the rest the compiler does insist on. So we can see here, again, there's the header of the class, and we can see that between the opening curly bracket here and the closing curly bracket at the very end, there can be multiple methods in between. So we can have many methods, um, as many as we like, in fact. Um, this picture is not quite complete. It is complete as far as we have seen it so far, but in fact there are two more things um, inside the curly brackets, which is called the body of the class. Inside the body of the class, we can also have fields and constructors, which are both elements that we haven't seen yet, but that we will look at next. This is just for completeness sake, so this is something we haven't yet encountered. But these are really the only things. So this is the complete structure of a class in Java. There's always this class header, and then follow optionally fields or constructors, which may or may not be there, and then a list of the methods. We should, as one last thing, have a look at comments. Let me take another class again. So here I have um, several different kinds of comments. Here, this line, shown in gray, is a comment. It is introduced with a double slash symbol. If you write anywhere a double slash symbol, I can do that in the middle of the method, double slash, then the rest of the line is a comment. I can type whatever I like. The comment is intended for a human reader. The Java system, the Greenfoot system, will completely ignore it. If you start a comment with a double slash symbol, the comment is a one-line comment. It extends from the beginning of that comment to the end of the line, and the next line will not be a comment anymore. Then there are two other styles of comment. One, the next one is a multi-line comment. So if you want a comment that spans multiple lines, there is a possibility um, to start the comment with a slash and a star. If you do this, then the comment spans multiple lines. And I can write now several lines of comments. And it is opened with slash and star, and is closed with a star and a slash. So that is a comment that spans multiple lines. And then there are special purpose comments. That is the ones that are very similar to multi-line comments, but they start with a double star at the beginning, slash and double star. The slash and double star comments, they're also called Java doc comments, they serve a special purpose. They appear always either right before the class header or right before a method header and they explain the purpose of what follows. So the one before the class header is called a class comment, explains the purpose of a class. The one before the method header is called a method comment and explains the purpose of the method. Where's the other one? The ones with a single star that are shown in gray are just general purpose comments that make general remarks to a maintenance programmer. So we see those fairly rarely. But in a well-documented program, we will always have a class comment, starting with star and double slash, and a method comment in front of every method. That is the structure of the class and the three different styles of comments that we have available to comment our class. Okay, that's it for today. Bye-bye.